Welcome, one and all, to this very special Quickfire Chaos Clip Show! Hey everyone, it's Derek, host of How Not to DM. I'm in the middle of getting season three all done and dusted uh, in the middle, more like in the beginning, still working on it, but it's going to be awesome. And I'm super excited for that. But to tie everybody over, I thought I'd do a fun clip show of the quickfire chaos segments, uh, do two different shows, one for the role play segments and one for the game design and other stuff segments. Before we get started though, I wanted to just give you a little bit of background on quickfire chaos and kind of how it came to be. So my friend, Steve Mullis, he reached out to me in between season one and two and just said, hey, I love the show. I do podcasting for a living or I, I produce and I edit and that kind of thing. And if you ever want to chat, please let me know. And I said, yeah, sure. Heck yeah. So Steve and I got together. He gave me some really great feedback on how to improve the show. A lot of stuff that I applied to this uh, latest season. So hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. But the one thing he mentioned was it'd be fun if I did some kind of mini game and I kind of already had an idea in mind I, I thought it'd be fun to try to highlight the guest skills by putting them on the spot and making them kind of improvise whether it be pretending to role play at the table or you know um, doing what they do really well in creating fun uh, encounters or traps or puzzles or you know uh, whatever it is that they're really good at and so I thought I'd, I'd kind of incorporate that so that's really how quickfire chaos came to be I don't think I ever sat down and explained that to everybody, but yeah, that's really the origin story. So with that explanation out of the way, uh, let's jump into the actual meat and potatoes of the episode. So this is episode one, we're gonna go through all of the role players. I'm gonna introduce each guest first, and then after they're done, we'll chat a little bit about some of the funny things they said or did, or, or maybe something that uh, we couldn't include in the episode itself, but uh, that I wanna mention to you, just behind the scenes uh, into what it's like to make a podcast. So. Yes, sit back, relax, kick your feet up, and please enjoy the Quickfire Chaos Roleplay Clip Show. First up, we got my boy, Hamilton. Kaz, the mighty Manticore, we appear before you and ask, what would you have us do? Hmm, well, I have quite a, quite a, ta a task for... Some mighty warriors? Don't look mighty enough to me, I must admit. We Tell can me prove your, our metal. Your, yeah, prove your metal. Tell me the, the, the greatest beast that you've vanquished in your, in your battles. We have slain a hydra. A hydra? Hmm. Well, I could do that in my sleep, but fine. I'll, your measly humans can probably... That's probably a bit hard for you. Okay. We know you're quite busy, which is... Yep. Why you need our help? Yes, well, I'm always busy. Mm, just give me a second. I've got to second my teeth. <clears throat> oh, God. Dear, that was the last party. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, yes. Uh, w well, I have this journal. Uh, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they weren't up to snuff those, those lots, so um, I thought I'd have dinner. Um, the journal, uh, I need, uh, well, party, the last party before, and this is why I ask of your, of your, your caliber is because uh, they perished on this expedition with a, with a travel log. I asked them to go and um, and record some data for a for a, a, a new well, they were forward scouting for the next invasion, and um, and uh, I need that journal. Hmm. I see. Sharp. Where did you send this party? Well, over the the high crest of the mountains, they went up there. I mean, there was a dragon in a lair. I was aware of. I didn't mention it because I thought, well, if it comes up, it's too late. So um, I sent them that way, and um, and it, yeah, somewhere around there. If you hear dragons roaring, it's probably close by. My, my lord, do you know what type of dragon it is? I think it's an ancient white dragon, nothing major. <laughs> well, uh, well uh, I suppose it explains how the party was so well preserved when they were brought back to you. Uh, well, yes. Uh, yes, they were. Um, no, that was another party. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I lost one in there. 
I ate the ones who came and interviewed before you. Sorry, because they just were... They looked more tasty than they did useful. Uh, I see. Um, I have not bathed in weeks, sir. I would not taste good. (laughs) No, you smell rancid. (laughs) I'm very sorry. So, um... It's a good trick. Uh, people, my servants have learnt this as well, so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to bathe them more regularly by force, <laughs> just in case. Well, uh, we shall go and we shall fetch this journal from beyond the mountains and bring it back to you. We may drop it off at your front door and flee, but we will do this job for you. <laughs> well, I'll give you that you're intelligent, then. <laughs> You've learned something from this encounter. I fear, I, I, I fear you... Well, no, go on. We'll see. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Call in the next one, David. I think we're going to need a second a second uh, set. Yes, go on. We're, Good luck. Bye-bye. Yes, we, we will go, Cass. We will go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hamilton is such a good role player. Uh, just love chatting with him in general. He's so enthusiastic about everything he does, and he really puts 110% into what he does. And you can tell from this clip, you know, we rolled a few dice, and he filled in so many nooks and crannies in that character. He decides he's a manticore and that he's eating all the parties that come in and interview for the jobs that he's got for them. So just an excellent role player, and he did such a good job. He was also the first one that I asked to do this, really. Uh, So he just passed with flying cutlers, right? Uh, It was a bold strategy uh, on my part as well to do a British accent uh, with him, you know, as the first quickfire chaos. But I think that I pulled it off. You know, I think I pulled it off. He didn't say anything about it. Uh, either way, whether or not it was terrible or good, he is kind of a nice person. So I don't know if he would have said something, but either way, uh, super fun. After trying it out with him, I guess you you could say I tried it out with him. He was really the one I tested it with. And because it was so funny and so good, I knew that I had something that I could use for the rest of my guests too. So shout out Hamilton. Well done, friend. Next up, we have one of my personal heroes and a fantastic role player in Guy Sclanders. So, let's hear Guy. Uh, I am Sir Grievous, and we've been told that you have an errand to run. Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. But I think I should preface this by by just pointing out that um, I'm not entirely sure that you're you're up, you're actually um you're you're qualified. As a matter of fact, oh well, this does require a certain amount of y- yes intelligence and understanding um, and capacity, really, uh, to, to to grasp the fundamentals of the enormity and the peculiarity of this 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 undertaking. Well, well I assure you, I've. I've studied in the finest schools in the land. My father made sure that I had the best education, so I think I can perform the task quite admirably, if you'll give me a chance. Well, the best schools, you say? Indeed. Well, I suppose. If your father's got enough money for you to have decent breeding. All right, then. The challenge is the Royal Cartographic Society currently believes that the world that we are on is round. What? Now, we all know this is nonsense. Yes, exactly. We know that the world is definitely flat as a piece of paper. Why? Because we've seen it on a piece of paper. Yes, yes. Makes sense, doesn't it? So, I need to draw the final map, the greatest, most amazing map that has ever been created before and will never be created again. But... The map to end all maps. Well, exactly. Oh, well, maybe you're not such a dullard after all. I'm impressed. You get the point, then. Excellent. In order for me to create this map of all maps, the map to end all maps, I will need to use a specific ink. Hmm. Now, unfortunately, this ink can only be found within the certain chamber of a nymph's heart. Do you have a lead... Well, the local druid, or gardener, as I like to call him, he uh, has some ideas that there is a wood elf that is in a forest not far from here. A rather interesting forest, actually, as it wasn't completely mapped out until about 50 years ago. But that's only because of a clerical oversight. Uh, I I digress, nonetheless. There's a wood elf by the name of Chaos... Is it chaos? Katos? 
Kalios, something along those lines. Nonetheless, this Woodolf claims to have been bewitched by a nymph. In which case, they will probably know where the nymph is. Hmm. You, you up for a little, um, murder? <laughs> well, if it's for the map to end all maps for the RCS, the Royal Cartographer Society, it shall be done. Oh, absolutely. Once I prove the RCS wrong, there'll be no stopping me. Oh, this is in direct defiance of the RCS. It's time someone made a stand. All of this spherical nonsense. It can do no good. Hmm. I shall go. Oh, man. I'm literally listening to these right before I say anything. So <laughs> if I'm chuckling to myself, you know why. This is amazing. Uh, second NPC to question my character's ability to help them. Uh, so that's two for two. I love that guy just made up the Royal Cartographer Society. I mean, I'm sure he's got some world building stuff that he's drawing on, right? He said that he already has this pompous cartographer character, so he he really had that uh, down. But just so funny. Uh, love the the flat Earth conspiracy. <laughs> I mean, we've only ever seen the Earth on flat pieces of paper, so it must be flat. Can't argue with that logic. Uh, also, uh, Nymph's heart, which is funny because my next guest also rolled up the nymph's heart as the thing to fetch. So with that segue, let's move on in to uh, Todd Stashwick. Uh, good sir, I hear that you are in need of some assistance. Welcome to the hills of Indinga. Yes, I am Rothick. I am a shepherd, and as you can see, all of my sheep have turned to stone. Now, I have done the research, and I have found that there is a curse. I have two of the components, but one is missing. I need you to venture deep into the woods of Blizzard and find me, the heart of a nymph. It is harvest soon. I must shear these sheep, and I cannot shear stone. And I will go broke. My family will starve. You are the champion that is required. So please head into the forest of blizzard and find me the heart of a nymph. You need not cut it out. What I need for you to do is win her heart. Oh, that's a twist I did not foresee, but uh, it shall be done. I'm not a barbarian. I am but a shepherd. I do not ask that you cut the heart of a nymph. But have her return with her undying expression of affection for you. Are you a bard, sir? Uh, I, I am not, but I know a few songs. You might want to bring me. That is a fantastic suggestion. Oh, man. Doing this with a professional person who gets paid to act was incredible, and someone who does improv classes, like, like runs them for people, you know? I gushed about Todd at the end of the episode with him, but yeah, I loved him and everything I've seen him in. He plays such a good, intimidating character but then he plays them with such good nuance as well so if you haven't checked out any of todd's stuff you should but yeah i love that he got the same thing nymph's heart but instead of asking me to do some murder like guy did <laughs> todd asked me to win the nymph's heart you know which was a good a good little twist that he put it on there right it'd be easy to say just go cut it out because it's D D. but instead uh, go win the heart so Loved that. Uh, loved that he kind of did some world building about the land in which he lived and stuff. You know, immediately thinking of ways to flesh out and make it more real, even though we're just two random people role playing for three minutes on a podcast. So, yeah, enough gushing about Todd, but loved chatting with him. It was so fun and uh, incredible guest. All right. Now, speaking of really good role players, let's move on to my good friend from uh, not the land down under, but the land adjacent, Robert Hartley out of New Zealand. Also, happy Yorkshire Day, bud. I know it's going to be late for that, but happy Yorkshire Day to Robert Harley. Oh, uh, Reggie. Uh, is it is it Reggie? Yes. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, that's Reggie. Uh, sorry, sorry yes. I, I, I don't believe I caught your name. What? Oh, uh, I am Sir Grievous. Uh, I have been told that you have a, a job that needs performing, and I am the man for that job. Right, right, right. Sir Grievous, is that? It is. Night, is that? 
it actually reminds me of um, a time that I've, I met a fella who did grievous bodily harm to another knight. Uh, oh. he, obviously, his name wasn't grievous, but he was. Right. Uh, he was definitely <laughs> grievous. He was quite a big fella, actually. He uh, he had quite the quite the waist to him. Uh, the knight yes. didn't. I'm, I'm talking about grievous. The, the, the we, we actually called him grievous. That's why it reminds me of that. You see. Uh, so um, yes, it, I see. Well, it's, uh, oh, sorry. Of course, I'm, I'm rambling uh, here. So. Uh, you've, you've got you're here for the job, are you? Uh, the, to, to retrieve the key was that is that uh, why you've been sent? Yes, it is, and I've heard that you can pay. Uh, of course, of course, of course, I can pay. <laughs> that actually reminds me of the time that I went on a job and didn't actually get paid. I I, oh, I, 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 t- so? I took it as I took it as assumption that I uh, I was going to get a pay job. It was so it was down uh, down near the the dock, you see, and I I went down to the dock and I said, yes. I hear you've got jobs going, and apparently it was like an intern thing. When I I'm rambling again, uh, I'm sorry. I see. Um, so, and you didn't get paid. That's quite unfortunate. But no, yes. I didn't uh, get you, you. So I've got I've got money for you. So you see, uh, so what happened is, uh, you know, uh, the old archmage, uh, mm. arch archmage uh, Ar- Archibald. It's an unfortunate name, Arch, Arch, Archibald the Archmage. There's a lot of arches in there. He lives out, out, yes. out by the archways. Have you? Ah, uh, yes, and, indeed. Uh, yeah, well, he came down. He came down to my apiary. You see, have you? Uh, you know what an apiary is? It's, a, it's where I keep my bees. Yes, yes, I am familiar. Yeah, well, well, that actually reminds me of the time that I, I talked to a fella that didn't actually know what an apiary oh, was, and he, he thought it was know. somewhere he get apes. <laughs> silly, that's quite silly unfortunate. Bugger. Yes. Yes. No. Uh, but sorry, anyway, the, I don't. The rage. Yes, yes. He asked please. me. He came down to my apiary, you see, and he uh, and he was doing a little uh, tour of the place, and and you see, I've got these wonderful bees over here. You might be able to see them. Those those bright green ones, way over there. You might you might actually think that they're like apples or something. They're actually huge. They're they're a lot bigger than they they look. Those as well, are bees. Though. Yeah, those are my bees. I've been I've been breeding a whole bunch of bees. You see, I've actually got ones that are even bigger than that. A little bit more green dangerous bees. too. <laughs> green. So bees. the archmage was here looking at the was, green bees. That's right. That's right. Sorry, I'm digressing again. Uh, oh, my my wife says I'd be I'd be bloody losing my head if I didn't <laughs> think about uh, it. I'm not sure um, she can get a word in. To be honest, uh, no, no. Yes, well, that reminds on. me of the time I was down uh, <laughs> down at the the library and I was asking a woman for the books. You see, uh, a yes. book I wanted on uh-huh. beekeeping and. Uh, and she said, "I've got the just the thing for you." And then I, she ended up closing the library before I actually got the book because I forgot. I, I kept rambling so much. Anyway, sorry, I'm yes. digressing. Indeed. So Arch, Ar- Archibald, the archmage from the arches, he came down and he was in my admiring my uh, my bees that I've, uh, I've I've been made. And you see, and then one mm-hmm. of them, the aggressive one, he came down, swooped the key right off of his his belt and took it down into his hive. You see, uh, so. Ah. So the problem is, the archmage, he's got my head on a block, you see, and he says, if I don't get that key back from my hive, I'm, I'm, I'm for it, you know? So the thing is, I have lost my beekeeping suit, and I don't want to go in there without it. So if you can go down into my hive, and I'll warn you, it's a big place, bit of a dungeon, if anything, and, uh, and you can tackle my giant bees, I'd appreciate if you didn't hurt them. But at the end of their uh, hive, there might be a key that you need to return. If you do that for ah. me, I can give you some gold. Yes, I believe I can complete this task. Uh, I will just uh, head over this direction, and uh, I shall go down the beehive, All shall right. I? Well, yeah, that's a wonderful yes, thing. You uh, have a good... Right. Uh, that reminds yes. me of the time that you uh, just... I'm sure, yes, 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 I'm sure. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> this was the first time I really tried to uh, mess around with the moving away from the mic. Yep, okay, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, whatever you say, yeah, bye, bye. Uh, to uh, really get the effect of me trying to leave a conversation when someone is rambling, because for some reason it seemed like a lot of people were rolling on my tables, the uh, eloquent or uh, rambly sorts, and uh, Robert was one of them. Uh, He's the first one who really did a a really unhinged kind of character and voice, and I loved it. Uh, His waffling and his uh, thinking of anecdotes that were just completely random were incredible. So, well done, Robert. Funny thing about the Archmage Archibald bit, I think I mentioned this in the episode, but Right as he said, the Archmage, what was his name? I was thinking Archibald, too, just because Arch, Arch, you know, and uh, super funny that that's the name he picked out of his mind. Great minds think alike. Uh, Yeah, Robert, awesome. He's the DM of uh, a little uh, group called Viva La Dirt League out of New Zealand. You may have heard of them. You've probably seen their YouTube videos. Uh, So go check those gentlemen out if you have not yet. Next, we are on to my friend up north in, in the Great White Frozen North, uh, Joel. Uh, hello, uh, are you the owner of this establishment? Well, can't you tell by my finery and, you know, I'm not wearing just a simple apron. This 
the fabric is very expensive. Uh, yes, uh, apologies. Uh, it, it does seem very expensive. Uh, we were told that the owner of this bakery had an important job for us. Hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, it is important. I have these croissants and other delectables that need to be delivered, but I am, as you can see, far too important for such a task. I'm willing to pay. Do you accept fritters as payment? Are there apple fritters? Um, apples? Yes, apples. Yes, I can, I can have one of the two, one or two of them, uh, put apples in, yes. Very well, I, I think we could do this. I do have to ask, though, is there not someone you hire for these sorts of deliveries that could help you? I, I, I don't mean to make it sound trivial, but of, of course your business is very important. I can give apple fritters to someone else. Uh, you happen to be here and you happen to say you would like to help. Uh, but mm, yes, I do typically, but they're not here. And maybe you. Maybe you had something to do with that. But, mm, yes. Oh, <laughs> I I cannot speak to the location of your previous delivery person, but we we can do this for you. We will be back as soon as possible. Huh. Yes, uh, I do take a break when the uh, when the sun hits the uh, the lamp post uh, there, and so be sure to uh, arrive before then. And I do uh, have a, a short. Uh, siesta at that time. I see. Well, we will be here in time to not wake you. <laughs> yes. I require the sleep to keep my skin youthful and and everything clean and just right. <laughs> yes. Well, we will uh, be on our way then. Yes, thank so, you. Thank you very much. Next time you need uh, anything, come back to Better Bread Than Dead, and I will be sure to have what you need. Very kind of you. I uh, love that Joel added in the bit about the lamppost, because, you know, most people don't have the fantasy watches or uh, timepieces, and so how do you tell time? Well, it's when the light hits this certain lamppost when he's taking his siesta. So yeah, that was perfect. Well done, Joel. All right, next up is my good friend Nathan from the Reckless Attack podcast. Good sir, I understand that there is a task that needs performing. Uh, what can we do for you? The spindly individual ushers you into their shop, and as soon as you kind of come through, you see that there are paintings everywhere. All of them finished, all of them hyper-detailed, but almost grotesquely hyper detailed to the point where moles are prevalent. There are even stranger kind of inhuman level of cheekbones, that sort of thing, but none of them monstrous, just all strange. And this individual who you know to be Bartholomew of Bartholomew's busts, who is a painter here in the city, ushers you in to his drawing room, I suppose, literally and figuratively. And, and he sits you down and immediately walks over to a canvas that is blank and starts peering at it and looking over at you almost compulsively and says, uh, yes, yes, you're, uh, you're here for the, the job, right? The job that I posted up on the, the board that a couple days ago that I think I had to pay like five silver for that kind of thing just to get it posted. Was that you? Uh, yes, I did see a job posting for Bartholomew and I thought I'd drop in and, and see the nature of the, the job. Yes, so, well, I have a rival. His name is, uh, well, his last name is Porter. He works for and owns, I suppose. Uh, I don't know, actually know what kind of business license he has, whether it's like he rents out the space, but 
Porter's yes. Portraitures is the place that he he owns or at least operates mm. out of. You understand what I mean. That's where he does his business and, you know, presumably yes. maybe owns, owns, uh, does w- w- whatever. And, well, we are, unfortunately, uh, two sides of the same coin. We, I am a cursed individual in a, a very literal, magical kind of sense. There was a whole rigmarole when I was uh, born. He's actually my brother. So when we were born, we were twins. There was some sort of uh, spell incantation. Actually, if you want, and he's still painting just like manically as yeah. this is all happening. And he's like, oh, actually, if you want, and he leans over and like starts ruffling through some books that are next to him. And if you want, uh, I think I have uh, maybe like a, some some incantations of that kind of stuff that I can kind of explain to you about kind of what happened. And he notices that you don't care. And he, <laughs> Bartholomew, keeps going. He's like, uh, well, so, well, I, I, we, we were twins. And uh, someone cast a spell on my mom to create the ultimate artist. And, well, he created two great artists. Well, one great artist and a uh, porter. And I like to think that I actually capture the true spirit of what these subjects are. I, you know, you, you can tell. I do not, I do not fuss. I do not, you know, make things look any better. I do not cover Indeed. up any of their horrible You don't things. embellish. Exactly. Well, no, exactly. Exactly. You understand. And... I believe so, yes. And and Porter Porter is is he does not capture truth. What he does is he he flatters people, you know, and that's not art. That's not what art is. And I am sick of it for a lot of reasons. A just because my brother's kind of a jerk and B well because people like buying his paintings better. And I don't think that that is correct. If I'm being frank, just because I think mine are more reflective of the truth. And so if you could maybe just go over and just just a couple of them just i don't know if it's like a send a message thing and maybe you can actually be a consultant on this i'm not really sure but you know it's just maybe send a message or like just like destroy all of them i'm not sure which or you could just like burn the whole thing mm. down I, you know i'm not really an expert in in these sort of events i had hoped that my silver would also buy me an expert which is i guess presumably presumably you i have dealt with the fair few curses before I am intrigued by the nature of this spell. You did mention you had some paperwork and or, or scrolls that may explain it more further in depth that I would like to look over, but I shall go over to Porter's forthwith and take a gander and at least begin to scope out the place and, and decide how I might pursue this further. I do understand your plight, though, Bartholomew, and I... I think that your paintings are wonderful. There is something to be said for attention to detail. And he turns around your portrait, which is somehow already done. And it is a <laughs> it is a masterwork if you have any eye for art, but it is not a flattering picture. Every every unconscious worry that you've ever had about yourself is somehow magnified in the eye of Bartholomew. But it is uncanny yeah. and it is indeed a masterpiece. Well, I do appreciate this. I Are you going to be hanging this up on the wall? Or is this my payment? Uh, uh, it's a down payment, but it, sort of, in a way. Uh, really, so the curse is that I have to draw these things. I mean, there's a lot of other kind of aspects to the curse uh, that I guess I could go into. And actually starts listing off, like, five other bullet points of, like, well, here's the subsidiaries and subsections of my curse. And has some theories about other ways that the curse manifests itself. But long and story short is that he will still pay you, but you just get this because like he has clearly no room for any more paintings anywhere in his yes, in his shop or your walls are quite filled. Yes. Well, Bartholomew, I shall return once I have done a little research and uh, have cased Porter's place out as well. Yes, it has been great meeting you, and I believe I can be of some assistance. Excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk about terms and contracts and that sort of thing. I actually think I have. And then just like, as you are presumably walking out the door is still talking about (laughs) contracts and other specificities therein. Man, Nathan did such a good job. Uh, Something I love is he was the first one who really just started to narrate the scene like a DM does. And I didn't ask him to, uh, but after he did it, I was like, wow, that's actually really good and kind of adds to it. 
And so I encouraged my subsequent guests. I think I, I tried to anyway, when I remember to like say, Hey, you should, you know, if you can, you should narrate it just to kind of show everybody. Uh, but yeah, what a great job. He really painted a great picture. Eh? <laughs> um, with the rivalry and the brothers and the curse and stuff. Um, yeah, really fleshed it out. I think he did a good job of, of an example of role playing without having to do a crazy, silly voice. Uh, I love them, but you don't have to do them to really immerse the people you're playing with and to, you know, set the scene in such a way that, that um, you feel like you're there. So well done, Nathan. And uh, yeah, check out his podcast, Reckless Attack, if you haven't already. And uh, check out more of his great skills behind the screen. All right, next up, all the way from down in Florida, my friend Enrique, known as Newbie DM. Uh, sir, I have heard that you are in need of some assistance. You are the, the uh, owner of this dairy farm? Uh, I am the owner of the dairy farm, my friend. Yes, yes, the dairy farm. So uh, what, what do you need us to help with? Well... All my good ideas come to me when I'm milking a cow. Yeah. And I was milking a cow recently, and, well, I thought, well, maybe this chap here could help me. Uh, it seems that a sinkhole has opened in the market, and um, I've lost all my uh, glass jugs. Now, I don't suppose the glass jugs are going to survive falling into a sinkhole. I understand that. But within those glass jugs, there was a very important item that I need to find, and it is a pearl. And why is this pearl important? Well, perhaps you've never seen a purple cow. But a purple cow gives you purple milk. And this pearl helps me uh, to purify this purple milk. Why do I have purple cows? That's a story for another day, my friend. Oh, I was about to ask, yes. It's not important. You see, the purple cow is uh, quite a... Well, it's quite a sight to be seen. And I don't like to show off my purple cows, you see. But, but this pearl... I need you to find this pearl in the sinkhole, my friend, uh, so that I can purify my purple milk and sell the purple milk to people like you, who drink milk because you have fine teeth. Well, thank you for the compliment. What does this pearl look like? Is there a way we can distinguish it from whatever else is down Do you there? know what the shape round is, my friend? Uh, yes, I, I do. Do you know what the color white is, my friend? I Yes, I, I do. But do you know what yay, um, about two inches is, my friend? Uh, okay, two inches. So yes. it's a two-inch white pearl, my friend. I, I was... Now it's was, got black spots on it. So oh. it's spotted like a cow. But not purple. No, 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 no. This is a white and black pearl. White with black spots. Okay, we, we need to go get the pearl that helps the purple. I, I suppose I shouldn't confuse myself. Right, we will get this pearl for you. Thank you, kind sir. Uh, she I has a command word. Petunia. The pearl has a command yes. word. Petunia. Yes. If I, you I say the word Petunia as you're holding the pearl, well, you know what? Never mind that. Do not say the word Petunia while you're holding the pearl, please. <laughs> now you I don't want to know what curious. happens. <laughs> I'm very curious. Well, we shall go get this pearl for you. I'm assuming you can pay. I can pay in milk. That's that sounds good. Yes, yes. I, I think we can agree to your terms. And we perhaps with the milk, I'll throw in a couple copper. We shall go and get this pearl for you. Now, now I do have uh, one final thing to tell you. Oh yes. And let me tell you, truth, sir, is a cow that will yield such people no more milk. And so they are gone to milk the bull. I am sure you understand what I'm trying to tell you, right? Y yes, Crystal. Good. Now go on. Find my pearl, please. Oh, man. Awesome. Well done, Enrique. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he really played this intense kind of, I don't want to say creepy, very intense, uh, intentional, maybe mysterious dairy farmer with purple cows. A lot of weird livestock uh, and, and animals. People have green bees, uh, purple cows. Yeah, uh, welcome to the fantasy farm. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was a really fun one. I uh, loved how he uh, mansplained the size and shape and color uh, so that I would understand uh, what a pearl was. Uh, to be fair, I did ask the question. Uh, so I, I opened myself up for that one. Uh, well done, Enrique. All right. Uh, next is Matt from Roleplay Chat. 
So, so let's say you approach. There's like a there's a log, like a rotting log, on the side of the road, as you are wandering about, heading towards the village, and the the log is like shaking. It's just shaking a little bit. There's like maybe some <laughs> mushrooms falling off of it, and you you know oh, you're like, yeah dust yeah uh uh-huh uh-huh it's like a rotting old log it really smells musky and out from inside the log comes this like very small curled up man with like a cape over his head like a black cape and he kind of looks up to you and he's got these like skinny fingers skinny long piano fingers and he's like hey hello hello will you help me Oh, oh my, uh, uh, well, uh, well, what do you need help with? You see, I, uh, I need to go get the treasure that is in the miner's cave, but there are some miners there who just, they are too mean to me. I need help to really get them out of the way. Oh, you, you need my help to go... Uh, are they big? Are they strong? Are they scary? I I have some spells, but I'm not sure I'm the one for the job. And he kind of looks you up and down. Hmm. Perhaps you should get some brawn with you. Do you have any stronger friends? Uh, oh, well, uh, now that you mention it, I am headed into town to meet with some uh, bigger friends of mine. Uh, perhaps... We could all, in concert, help you, but, uh, uh, this, this treasure, uh, what is it, if you don't mind my asking? It is my ring. And he, like, on his scrawny hands, you see he's got all these, these different rings of different colors. One's maybe got, like, a, a bluish sapphire tint to it, and they're all intricate and very different. You know, one looks elven made, one looks dwarven made. And you can tell that on his ring finger, on on his ring finger, like the left hand, he's missing his ring. That's there. He says, hey, my wife will be very upset if I don't get it back. Uh, I see that's uh, quite the collection you've uh, assembled there. I hope you don't intend to do anything nefarious with them. But, uh, well, uh, yes, I think we could, could help out. Uh, I shall head into town and find my friends, and we can meet you at the mouth of the cave at a, oh, a sundown, suppose? Yes, yes. Look for another log. That is my favorite place to stay. Okay. Uh, one more thing, if I may. Uh, would we be able to split this treasure, uh, or is it just the ring that we are going after? Oh, well... You see, the ring must return to me. But everything else you find in the cave, oh, that can be your treasure. I'm sure that there are many things. It is a it is a cave for Mithril, I hear. Oh, the, the magical metal, yes. Well, that does sound quite lucrative, my friend. I think we have an accord. He shakes, shakes out his hand. Shakes your hand, and it's like this scrawny little hand. It's, it feels like he'll like just fall apart, like the log he was hiding in. Okay, I kind of wipe wipe the top <laughs> on my robes and and give him a little like tip of my wizard's cap and and uh, start scurrying on into town. I shall see you soon, my friend. Uh, what may I call you? Mm, my name is Scrub. What about yourself? I am uh, Lefan the Great. Uh, at your service. Mm. Good to meet you. And then he like scurries back into the log. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well done, Matt. Love the touch of him hiding in a log. Who knew the bounty hunters did that? Also, am I unwittingly helping this world's Thanos collect all of his rings, all of his gems? Who knows? That's probably what he's got planned for me. So yeah, big trap just walking into it. But yeah, well done, Matt. Another DM who really... Uh, just kind of stepped up and started to narrate just on his own without prompting. And it was really cool to watch it all come together. Yeah, so much fun. Cool. All right, next we're moving on to my friend Kat from the D20 Dames. Hello, good morning. I, I heard that you had a, a job that needs doing, and uh, I think we're the people that do it. 
Oi there, love. How's it going? Oh, yeah, it's great, yeah. You've been having some trouble, though, have you? Have I? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. <laughs> with the, uh, with the garden, is it? No, 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 no. I remember. So, I was out gardening, and, uh, every morning for ten day now, there's oh. been really screeching. Oh, yeah. Like, loud noises? Are they coming from your garden or elsewhere, outside? Why did you want to see my garden? Well, yeah, sure. We, we could walk around while, and you show me about while we're talking. All right. Well, here are the petunias and here are yeah, the... Uh, very nice. Yeah. Buckleberry and... Lovely colours. Yeah. Did you, were you here to, to buy a pint of berries? I mean, sure, yeah. We could negotiate that. But you, you're talking about screaming that you've heard outside? At uh, odd hours in the morning. Oh, who told you that? Uh, well, uh, you did. Sorry. Yeah, y- you told me about some screaming. Oh, yes, yes, I did. Yeah, screaming all hours at the at the morning, evening, night. Hmm. I think I'm not getting very much sleep. I was about to say, have you not been sleeping much? <laughs> do you have any idea about where the screaming's coming from? And also, do you have any idea what's screaming? Like, does it sound like a person? Does it sound like a beast? You know? Oh, did you want to come see my my uh, my goats? You uh, looking for beasts? No, I, I'm just asking uh, where the screaming's coming from and if you know what it sounds like. But well, sure, goats, we can go yeah, see the goats. Scream. The goats, the goats scream. scream? Mm. Yeah, I think I've heard about these screaming goats before. Are they the ones that are keeping you up? What? How do you know that I'm up all night? Uh, y- you were mentioning that you've been hearing some screaming. Do you know where it's coming from? I- I'm here to help out with that. Oh, okay. Did the goats send you? Uh, no, no, the goats didn't send me. I saw you posting on the board in- inside town, and uh, y- you're looking for some help. So just hear about uh, that. Yes, I did. Yes, they're screaming think it's somewhere on my property right okay so may i propose this then maybe i roll my bedroll down i lay down here tonight and then if i hear anything i'll wake up and i'll try to deal with it and you can get some shut eye does that sound all right oh yeah yeah so you're wanting to you know it's not a bed and breakfast here right you might want to get back to the tavern I mean, did, I did could you need do directions? That. I don't need directions. No, I could go to the tavern, but then I can't hear the screaming. Probably, right? Oh, I told you about the screaming. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you've uh, you mentioned you've got some berries for sale, yeah? Ah, oh, yes, yes, I do. Yeah, let's make a trade. I figure out what the screaming is coming from, and you give us some berries for the oh, road. Oh, yes. Does that sound like a fair trade? That sounds fine. All right. Don't you worry about how I'm doing it or where I'm going to be going. I'll figure it out, and then I'll come back to you when I've figured out what the screaming is, all right? All right. Oh, man. Uh, something that I loved was that Cat was just laughing, <laughs> you know, with me. Uh, I feel bad when I'm laughing and they're trying to take it serious. So uh, she and I had a great time. You should definitely go check out uh, D20 Dames if you have a chance. More of her great skill there. But, yeah, I loved that... Uh, that she kept going back to the the screaming and really played the uh, the not sleeping well slash really absent minded character uh, to a T. Yeah. Anyway, had a ton of fun. Cat is a gem. It was awesome. All right. Next up. Oh yes, we have my friends Dylan and Aram from Kill Every Monster. Uh, so uh, good, sir. I I believe that you uh, have a, a quest for us. Uh, we are brave adventurers, and we're prepared to undertake any task. Yes. Yeah, for money. I the posting or did knowledge. involve a price. Yes. I am. You are standing in a graveyard. I imagined this was why you showed up. The introduction is unnecessary, and if I'm being fully honest, tedious. It's a graveyard. The graves would have been a. Do you see? Oh, you all put them in the ground. Right. No, right. You're right. You're, you put the corpses in oh, the ground. Yes. Right. Nope. They are not immediately visible. I am very good at my job. Who is so, uh, it? As, as a corpse guy. Oh. I, yes. I believe, uh, if I may interrupt, I, I believe that you have a, a job that you need us to undertake, Mr. Undertaker. It's not about yes. digging holes, is it? That was funny. I like that one. No. It's, like, it's not about digging holes, right? We're not going to dig I holes. Will, I will dig the hole. All right. 
I need a body back. Oh, you need bodies? Oh, we can make lots oh. of bodies. This uh, it's <laughs> Toast, <less trivial>. please. <laughs> Simple repossession is fully within my purview. I wouldn't no, no, no. Need. We can call it whatever you want. Yeah, we're repossessing a person. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Which one do you need to start repossess? The gravedigger leads you a little bit deeper in. And, you know, where you were near his hut is where basically the poors are buried. It's overturned dirt. It's There's nothing to indicate like any individual place. But as you get in and the stones, take, he takes you to a mausoleum. Mm. Oh. He takes you to uh, the mausoleum for the royal family. And he knocks on a sort of a slab of marble. Marble. It's uh, already engraved. The dates are not there. It is the impending grave for the present king. Now, the king, as you well know, is set to marry the queen of a neighboring kingdom. Also this, alive. Also alive. And the only heir due to the unfortunate and unforeseen disappearance of the elder son you know the way you say that he said disappearance yeah yeah it, yeah, it kind of like <laughs> you know the the way you say unforeseen makes it feel really seen. oh it was incredibly foreseen and in fact it was less of a disappearance more of murder ah. and the corpse was held here hmm. now i need that corpse back it is to the best of my knowledge on route back to someone, a cleric, someone who can bring them back. And if this boy walks again, he will inherit the throne, ah. and this marriage will be pointless. I see. I see. I need that corpse back. And I need it back as a corpse. Or at the very least, you need it to be ashes. Sufficient. Ah, uh-huh. I gotcha. Uh, if it were ashes, uh, how would we uh, be able to prove to you that it is uh, the right ashes? Uh, That's a good question. Oh, the the body was buried with all of its uh, royal accoutrement. The this the signet ring should still be with the body. If you can bring me the ring, all of the jewelry was buried with them. We couldn't have that getting out to pawnbrokers, people who would recognize it, try to trace everything back. Oh, yeah, who would do that? Yes. Lots of problems. Lots well, Toes, it, it appears like we have a job to do. We do. Uh, just out of curiosity, the general value of all the stuff inside, just just so we know what we're looking for. But what would you say the general value of all that was inside his term? We'll put it this way. It could amass you a small fortune. Wow. And if anyone recognized what you were selling and was willing to give you full price for it, wow. then it would be realized that you were in possession of the corpse of a disappeared princeling and your death would follow swiftly after either as revenge from their kingdom or in an effort to keep you silent from ours okay so special buyers understood all right thanks pal where are we going he does have a point yes but yes do you have any leads on where this body may be taken you mentioned a cleric he reaches back he's had a little lantern sort of at his side as he's been walking through, and he pulls it out. This has ten charges. It will track restless souls. Say, one generated through murder. No one knows who performed it. It would be ridiculous to ask. I happen to know of a restless soul that very recently left from here. This should give you enough of a trail. Once lit, it will stay active for six hours should let you get a few days worth of tracking and if you don't have any clues by then you're useless to me oh well based on when I think they leave they left you should have a week yeah well take us to where the body was he taps on the recently resealed grave again you may remember the beginning of this conversation where I told you where the body was and that it was in the place that I'm standing immediately I, adjacent you pointed to. out that it was going to be the place where the body goes and it's not and yes. the number's not there yet so I had assumed that maybe they prepped it maybe the body hadn't kind of maybe it was like in a morgue house being drained of fluids or whatever weird thing no, you humans do but no it was been here. dead for a year it was right. left in the prepared grave for our king well then light that baby up Let's get him. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe uh, the toes and you I... You seem qualified to handle this, gnome. 
just take your goblin. Excuse me, I am my own uh, goblin. Uh, yeah, he's my friend. Uh, Thank you. It, That's <laughs> absolutely astonishing. Well, uh, Tawaza, I suppose we best get on our way. We're definitely going to bill him for double meals, right? Double meals, double ho- and double hotel. Yeah. All I right. believe our per diem, yes, will increase indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, on our way. <laughs> oh, boy. I'll be honest. I'm not a favorites guy, so I'm not going to say this one was my favorite. But boy, if I were deciding on a favorite of the season, it would definitely be in contention. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've listened to anything that uh, Aram has been in before. Or if you've checked out Kill Every Monster, which you should, especially if you're a DM, really fun look at monsters in the monster manual, ways to run them, um, ideas on how to beef them up or change them. Anyway, uh, Dylan, incredible DM. Aram, really good role player, really, really sells his roles. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens to Toes the Goblin and uh, Terran the Gnome. I'm sure those two get in all sorts of trouble. Awesome. Thanks, you two. Uh, also, Kill Every Monster is up for an any award. So if you happen to listen to this and it is before the due date, you should go listen to their show and then vote on them as a winner. They would super appreciate that. And I think they deserve it as well. Cool. Uh, now we are on to the last three here. So we're whittling down. We are on to JR, our very own podcast producer and editor here at T4C Studios, JR of The Role of Cool. Corfell, the ranger, approaches you and taps you on the shoulder and uh, he says, <clears throat> I've heard that you uh, have a, a hat or something that's gone missing and I was hoping I could help you find it. Uh, um, uh, how, how did you know? Oh, well, uh, a lot of people in these parts are wearing hats, and I uh, just noticed that uh, you weren't wearing one. Also, I can see kind of a, a tan line, if you will, of, of where I can tell that your hat has been, but is no longer atop your head. Uh, so, kind of telltale signs, I suppose, uh, but that that's how I'm noticing. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. It, it, it's a, a very special hat. I... I you see, I, I make maps for my uh, uh, treasure hunting, and uh, and I and I write it in code. I have mm. very bad memory, so I have to use it uh, as to decode my my own scribbles in the maps. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, maybe you can right? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm sure we can help find your hat. A uh, couple of questions for you. Uh, what does the hat look like? And then uh, what were the circumstances in which you lost it? Where were you? Who took it? That sort of thing. It was a day where I was eating, I don't know, an apple, uh, an orange, uh, 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 a, a banana, a banana. Um, and, okay. Uh, I somehow, uh, I, I, using my uh, pen, and got g- getting confused and indecisive of whether I should write first or eat first. I I, I accidentally put the banana in in the hat. Uh, in the middle of see. and in the middle of the the. Street and it's su- sur- surprisingly, a-, a monkey came and took the banana and also took the hat. Sounds like he was a curious fellow. Uh, where were you when this happened? Was it was it down the street? Was it was it in the market where you bought the banana? Was it near your home? Yes, yes, yes. I was. I I, I came from. Uh, the market uh, couldn't decide to go home or to go on on the mission so I just decided to keep uh, walking around uh, could be a pet or, or something from from someone from the market hmm. well this is the first case of a monkey theft that I've been uh, been put to but uh, I'm sure we could figure out what the problem is uh, if uh, 
If it comes to it, I've got a few friends who know how to speak to animals, so perhaps I could get some information from the trees above, but, uh... And, uh, he, here, here's a... I bought a whole bunch of bananas. I, I figured ah. I'd bargain with a, with a, with a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you could get the monkey to trade back if it, uh, if the deal was sweet enough, so... This is a good good idea on your part. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll head over there and see what we can do. Uh, but uh, rest assured, sir, I, I think we can get your hat back. Uh, there is a question of, of course, the price. It does sound like this object is worth quite a pretty penny to you. So, uh, what 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 say you? What what do you have to offer? Uh, he, here is uh, the current uh, the current map I'm working on. I could share with you one fourth half maybe that, that sounds quite fair to me but of course we'll need the hat to decode it so sounds like a, sounds like a, a good deal to me well sir why don't you head home uh, and uh, rest a while and we'll uh, we'll go about finding your hat and once we find it we'll come and, and, and fetch for you we'll fetch you uh, uh, thank you good sir uh, have a good day now. Sleep well. Rest easy. Nice, awesome job, Jr. Uh, he he really he leaned into the uh, very confused character. Not sure where his stuff was. Uh, very eccentric type. Super good job of role playing there. Yeah, Jr. Like I said, he actually manages the team of editors who help edit How Not to DM, and he's the the producer of the show. So. If you ever get a chance to check out his show, The Role of Cool, which is an all Filipino cast uh, show playing through some of the stuff from Hit Point Press's The Islands of Sina Una, which is based on the pre colonial Philippines. Awesome. Uh, really cool stuff. And yeah, JR is just a really nice guy. Uh, so check out his episode too if you haven't. All right, we're getting down to the last two here. Next is Michael, aka Dead Aussie Gamer. You find yourself in an old apothecary. The smell of licorice and herbal remedies seem to permeate through the air as you uh, speak to what looks to be a uh, very, very red-eyed rat person. Patches of uh, fur missing from their limbs as you uh, as you kind of look him up and down, but uh, coated in the leathered, oiled garbs of an, uh, an alchemist of some kind. Hmm. An assortment of potion bottles dress the table in front of him as he looks to you with his beady eye. Come to see. Yes, yes, come to see. Step, step, step forward. Step forward. Uh, tell, tell, what is, what is name? What is, what is name? Uh, yes, I am Madville. Of Not the important. Forest. Sorry. I need something. Come, come close. Yes, yes. It needs death knell lotus. Yes, magical potions kills many. All will die. Might be slightly illegal. Slightly. Slightly. Ah, so uh, this is something we should acquire through uh, back channels, is what you're saying, <laughs> dear friend. No, no back channels. Back channels. People talk. People talk. Shh. Then they will find I. Find I is bad. You, you must journey to the withering woods. There, seek out the old one. The old one, she has her ways. Yes. And she uh, can provide us with this death knell lotus which you seek. What? No, no. She knows where you, you can find. Yes. yes bring uh, back, sorry. Bring back death knell. But be careful. Do not touch. Do not smell. And definitely... Do not eat. Hmm. Do you have some sort of container in which we might place this sample so that we don't unwittingly poison ourselves? Yes, yes, yes. What you take I for? He pulls out a bucket and places it. Uh, do you have a lid? Uh, I noticed some of your nice glassware with corks, perhaps? <sighs> he looks at the glass. And uh, he sort of does this twiddly motion with his fingers uh, as he miserly reaches for, for one of the, uh, the large bottles. 
He prepares to put it in the bucket, then stops and looks at you. He puts it down and then picks up a small triangular bottle, about half its size, and then Mm. goes to put it down and then stops and looks at you. He puts it back down and he takes out a test tube. And eventually he puts the test tube into the bucket as well. Is is this how much you need? Will this be sufficient? Yes, yes, yes. Even one small drop could kill a whole city. (laughs) Well, uh, we shall take the utmost care then. And uh, I assure you we shall return your glassware. I notice you seem quite uh, attached. Uh, Anyway, uh, what is your name, good sir? If we may need to tell uh, the ancient or uh, wise one of the withering woods. Call me Phyllis. Uh, Phyllis, yes. Uh, Thank you, old chap. Uh, It's been something. Uh, We will return with this death knell. Uh, What can we expect uh, as payment? 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 Yes, yes, payment. Hmm. He looks at the um, at the wall behind him. He then takes out this glowing red potion. Inside is this swirling pearlescent liquid uh, that gives off a strong magic aura. He takes it down and looks at it, then looks over his shoulder at you, then looks at the potion, then looks back at you, places it back on the shelf. <laughs> he then moves down to the smaller potions and eventually opens up a small drawer where he pulls out a clay pot. He says, this Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, what does it do? Ah, you see, pot always full. Yes, yes, the pot is always full. If you pour from this end, you have acid. You pour from this end, honey. Don't confuse the two. I, I, I believe I can tell the difference by sight and smell, yes. Uh, well, this is quite the item. Uh, I think we have come to an accord, my friend. Yes, yes. Uh, he uh, reaches out this kind of sweaty, very, very scaly palm towards you. Uh, he only has three fingers and a gnarled thumb. <laughs> uh, all right. I'll, uh, I'll go in for the shake then. And then uh, uh, as we're leaving, like, <laughs> wipe my robes. Why wipe it off on my robes and, and uh, plan to clean it off later. <laughs> very well. As you uh, leave the store, you hear this. As he says fellow. Shame he's going to die. <laughs> As he oh. continues. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, again, a strong candidate for favorite if I were to do that sort of thing. I will say, though, it might have been the listener favorites just because I had so many people commenting whether it was directly to me or in tweets or whatever saying that they really loved that segment. So, Michael, uh, smash that out of the park. Thanks a bunch to Dead as a Gamer. Super fun. He runs tons of different games. He even told the story in his episode about running an 86-hour game. So if you haven't checked out that episode yet, you should. Uh, really fascinating. That's like right on the cusp of where humans are supposed to go before they start shutting down. So anyway, well done, Dead as a Gamer. All right, last but not least, we move on to Tanya or Cypher of Tear. Who is it? Hello there. Ah, uh, yes, it is uh, Sir Gallivant here. I uh, saw posting on the job board that the barber needed some assistance, and I am here to provide. Ha-ha! Hmm. So you saw my posting? Yes, I did. It's right here. Took it down. Hmm. Hopefully you can finish this posting. After all, you took it down, and no one else can read it now. Come in. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. And I turn and, and grab this wrapped pie that is on my table and turn around and with a unnecessary flourish, this, this pie, it has a finger in it. Uh, sorry, uh, can you say that again? I, I think I heard you say it has a finger in it. A finger! A finger! Yes, a finger. Oh my, oh, what a dastardly deed. Who has done this? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't have put the posting up now, would I? Ah, I am beginning to follow. Yes? Yes. You're a paladin. Who do you follow? 
<sighs> I serve our Lord Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon. Hmm. Interesting. So you, Sir Gallant, your charge is to see where this finger came from and who it belongs to, and how it got into my pie. Yes, sir. I shall start with where you bought it from. Where did you acquire this pie? Oh, down at the pasty shop for Mrs. Lovett. Very well, my first lead. And he uh, pulls out a piece of parchment <laughs> and starts scribbling down and, you know, <laughs> getting ready to go on this hunt. And he stuffs it back into his breast pocket and says, uh, Anything else I should know? You're not getting paid unless you solve this. Agreed. Agreed. I think that's a, a fair fair term. Well, I shall go and I shall find where this finger has come from, and I will return and let you know. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, good day. I shall return swiftly. Oh! Offward! (laughs) And I just shut the door and go back to what I was doing. (laughs) Oh, man. Yep. Sometimes the dice just really know what they want, and what they want is Sweeney Todd. Those are four different tables from four different places around the internet i'm pretty sure four different people made them and that's what they made so that's incredible awesome well thanks so much for tuning into this uh quick fire chaos clip show i'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty long one after having listened to all these clips again myself as i was putting together this commentary so thanks for sitting through that a couple of things to note thanks to arcane anthems for the music uh, guardian spirit that i played underneath all of the role playing and then Thanks to Daniel Zombo for the intro and outro music. Uh, That's a track called Game Over. Really love it because it's kind of got that old school gaming feel. Um, So thanks to those two for the music. And thanks to T4C Studios for helping put this episode together. Thanks to Matt, um, my editor. And thanks to JR, the producer. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun listening back to all this stuff. I hope you did too. And if you have any friends or family that... Maybe don't listen to this show just because it's more of a DM kind of focused show. Maybe this is the episode you share with them because, uh, you know, it's about the role play and it's a lot of fun. And I'm sure there's people in the episode that they'll recognize and and, uh, have fun listening to. So, yeah, share this episode with your family and friends. The usual. Make sure to uh, give me a rating on Spotify. If you haven't already, uh, check out uh, Apple Podcasts. Give me a review there. That would be awesome. Uh, I have a Patreon. It is on hiatus right now as I'm in between seasons. But uh, if you want to help support the show, then go ahead and check out my Patreon as well. All those links are in my link tree along with a link for a listener survey. So if you have been listening to How Not TM for one episode or for 50 plus episodes, I would love to hear from you, hear what you like about the show, hear what you don't like about the show, hear what things you might want to hear changing for season three. Uh, I've done some of the interviews already, but there's still definitely a lot of interviews to do and a lot of stuff to make better. So if you want, go ahead and give me some feedback there. I'd love to hear it. That's in my link tree. I've tweeted the link out a few times as well, and I'll put the link to the uh, survey in my episode notes. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody. I'm really excited for season three ton of cool guests um, that I've recorded with so far and a ton on the list uh, for the future as well. Last thing is be on the lookout for my next special episode which should be dropping in a few weeks here which will be the game design and uh, game writers and uh, that kind of thing, uh, quickfire chaos segment. So the other half of my guests, for you game designer people, that'll be fun to kind of listen to them back to back and get some ideas for your own games. So cool. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for supporting Hound at the DM. You guys are awesome. You are the best. And I really appreciate everything that you have done for me, listening to the show, sharing it with your friends and family, and just in general, being a fan of the work that I do. It means a lot to me, and it makes it all worth it. Awesome. Well, we will wrap it up there. Thanks again to everybody for listening. And until next time, make sure to roll some Nat 20s for me.